Hi everyone, my name is Dr Matt Williams, I'm a tutor in politics and what is known as the Access Fellow at Jesus College at the University of Oxford. I've been involved with admissions at Oxford for 13 years, I've read thousands of personal statements from a range of different subjects, and I've read them so you don't have to. So in this video I'm going to share with you some of my top tips. In fact, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you decide which you think are better and worse examples of different aspects of a personal statement. So you're basically going to pretend to be the admissions tutor for a while. And this, I think, will really help you when it comes to writing your own personal statement and taking it to the next level. Okay, so that's the goal. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. So let's plough on. Right, I'm half blind, so I have to wear these tinted glasses, so just bear with me a little second while we go through the slides. All right, so where should we start? We should probably start at the beginning. The mantra that you have to stick with you in, for the entire time that you're writing your personal statement is that the personal statement must be personal. It's got to be true. It's got to be about you. We are looking to admit you to the university. Now, this sounds super annoying. Saying that your personal statement should be personal is quite annoying. <laughs> but what I mean by that is that a lot of people try and pretend to be somebody they're not. They might use quite flowery, pretentious language. They might come up with activities they've done that they haven't really done or they haven't done in the way they've said them and they sort of mislead us a little bit. Just be honest. And if you think there are gaps in what you would like to say about yourself that would make you a credible student, then it's relatively easy to fill those gaps, actually. If you go and take a look at my videos on super curricular activities on the channel, they should help you work out what to do. But even in just a couple of hours, with lots of free online resources, you can do some really great, what we'd call super curricular activities that will make you a credible student. But the bottom line is your personal statement has to be personal, okay? And that's exactly what we're looking for. So starting at the beginning, how should you open the personal statement? Well, like I said, I want you to work out which you think are better and worse approaches. So I've got four examples, and it's up to you to determine which you think are good, which you think are not so good, and try and work out why you think they are good or not so good. Okay, so starting with engineering, since the age of just three, I've wanted to be an engineer. Becoming an engineer is a burning ambition of mine, and I won't let anyone stop me reaching that goal. Okay, so that's number one, what do you think of that? Number two for medicine, what is pain? This simple question led my research into medical sciences and helped me realize that I wanted to become a doctor. Okay, number three for mathematics. Mathematics is a subject that has changed the world and will continue to do so. It will be of huge benefit to society for more young people to be trained mathematicians. Okay, and then lastly for English, Biting use of litotes in Beowulf, the sword wasn't useless to the warrior, creates a swirling, ironic illusion for the grateful reader of heroic vulnerability and epic magnanimity. Okay, so perhaps you might like to pause the video, have a think about which works well, which perhaps works less well, and try and work it out yourself. Incidentally, these are all examples that I have written, but they are very, very close to exactly the sort of things that we see crop up in personal statements. So they're very realistic and accurate, even though they're not, they were literally written by me. Okay, anyway, have a think. Which, which do you think works well? Okay, hope you've had a chance to think. Um, so let's start with the engineering one. This is fine. This looks good. It's a decent start. Um, some people get a bit worried about saying the, since I was very young, I wanted to do medicine, English, history, whatever, it's fine, you know, if it's true. If it's true that you have, for, for a very long time, wanted to study this subject, then there's no harm in saying it. I think some people get a bit scared that it's a bit of a cliche, but if it's true, it doesn't matter. It's also worth noting that it doesn't have to be <laughs> that you've had this lifelong ambition to study engineering. There aren't many three-year-olds that want to become engineers, and if you weren't one of them either, that's fine. <laughs> okay, so don't feel you have to have this sort of multi-generational uh, length of time wanting to do something, because that's definitely not required. I think one of the problems with the engineering one is that uh, they've used won't in that last sentence. Don't use won't. <laughs> in other words, don't use abbreviations with apostrophes. You want to use quite formal English, not sort of stiff and unnatural English. You know, short, simple sentences are ideal, but don't use won't or wouldn't or couldn't or anything like that. You know, it's will not, could not, and so on. All right. Next up for medicine, I think this is probably the best one personally because it tells the beginning of the story. So it's a good way to start a personal statement is at the beginning of the story. And they were brought into their interest in medical sciences by a particular question of what is pain. You know, that doesn't need to be your route into the course. But given that questions are the bedrock of academic study, this person comes across as someone who is ready to be a medical student pretty much straight away. They 
it's clear they get it, they understand medical sciences. A lot of medicine personal statements say something along the lines of, I, I really want to be a doctor, and that's fine, obviously, but you also need to be making it clear that you're ready to study medicine, which is sort of five, six years of science, and it's quite tough, and there'll be lots of difficult questions like, what is pain? Okay, so I think the medicine one is probably the most successful. The problem with, I have with the mathematics one is that it's a bit passive. There's no use of the first person pronouns, I, me, or my. So they're saying that mathematics is a world-changing subject, but it's not saying what the individual thinks of mathematics. Now, given this is a personal statement, you need to put yourself front and centre. So I think that's the problem with the maths one. For the English one, there is really no introduction. It's just launching straight into a discussion of what we would call a super curricular activity. So reading beyond the syllabus, the school curriculum. I mean, it sounds pretty good, but it's, it's very difficult to understand. This person is using very flowery language, lots of jargon, and it's one very long sentence. So it's just all a bit heavy and a bit complex. You know, keeping your language plain and simple is definitely to everyone's advantage. I'm going to be reading your personal statements super fast, so writing all of this stuff in great complexity is not going to help you. Also, there's no on-ramp, there's no introduction, they just sort of go straight into discussing a supercurricular activity. I would give us a little bit more of an introduction, you know, what's the beginning of your story? Why did you start down the road of wanting to study English? I mean, some other sort of minor points, there's a mixed metaphor here, apparently Beowulf is both biting and swirling. I mean, that's not the end of the world. I'm not going to reject anyone for that, but worth just keeping an eye on. The, the bottom line is that the English one is too complex and it's pretentious. This is someone who's pretending to be somebody that they are not. And remember, it's a personal statement, so just be yourself, okay? Next up, your story. So how do you actually sort of link the points together? Does your personal statement need to have some structure to it? Well, you decide. Which do you think are the best and which do you think are the not so good versions here. So starting off, and these are all, by the way, these, these next four are from lesser known sub science subjects at the University of Oxford. So starting with human sciences, for my geography A-level, I looked at demographic changes around the world in biology. Uh, oh, sorry, in biology, I really enjoyed studying genetics. Next, for material science, in physics A-level, we learned about the structure of graphene. I wanted to find out more, so I watched a lecture from Harvard University about how graphene could be used in DNA sequencing. This helped me understand... Dot, dot, dot. Next up, for earth sciences, I started with an interest in how rocks formed, but then found an interest in petrology. Next, I will look at paleobiology. And lastly, for psychology and linguistics, I've read Freud's Interpretation of Dreams. I've also read some of John Austin's work on speech acts. So. Perhaps pause the video, have a think about what works, what works less well. Okay, here we go. So starting off with the human sciences, I mean, it's fine. Demonstrating an interest in various things that are relevant to human sciences. I suppose one problem I have is that it's curricular rather than super curricular. In other words, this is someone telling me about what they're doing in their school curriculum, but they're not telling us what they've done to go above and beyond. And in a personal statement, if you want to be credible as an undergraduate student, then you need to go beyond what you're doing at school because at university you're constantly going to be going beyond the curriculum. So showing a bit of willingness to do that, even if it's having only read a couple of things, it's very important. Another thing is that there's no linking between the points. So it's jumping from point to point. So for geography, I looked at de demographic changes. For biology, I looked at genetics, right? It's just sort of big leaps. There's no linking. And that's why I think the material science one is, is better, because there is more of a sort of chain that links the points together. So it starts off with a curricular point. In physics A-level, we learnt about the structure of graphene, and then it links on to what they then took to go above and beyond that. I wanted to find out more, so I watched a lecture from Harvard University. There's loads of lectures on YouTube from, from the world's best university, so go and find those if you want to. And so, you know, you can see this person is telling a bit more of a story, so they're linking their points together. You don't need to sort of come up with a, a link between every point you make, but it just can aid readability if your personal statement has a bit of a flow to it, if it has a bit of a beginning, a middle and an end, and the points you're making are linked together, rather than you hopping around from one point to the next without much sequencing. Okay, uh, the earth sciences one is fine, um, you know, giving some examples of supercurricular interests like petrology and paleobiology. I mean, one alarming thing here is that this person has said that they're interested in how rocks form, but they're also interested in petrology. Well, petrology is the study of how rocks form. So they, 
don't seem to know what that word means, the, the, the jargon that they've thrown in there. And this is quite common, actually, is that people use complicated technical words, but they use them inaccurately or inappropriately. So you need to be very careful with that. I mean, as a rule of thumb, it's best not to use jargon if you can possibly avoid it, because it, it does often get in the way of communication. And it's quite often a sign of someone who is a bit insecure and is trying to pretend to be someone that they're not. So just be, just be careful with that. If you are going to use jargon and you think it's essential, fine, but make sure you're using it appropriately. Okay, and then lastly, for psychology and linguistics, I mean, fantastic book choices. Freud's Interpretation of Dreams, Austin on Speech Acts, these are great things to read, but there's no linking whatsoever. This is a, a proper sort of leap from one subject to the next. So a bit more structure, I think, would really help in that instance. Okay, so proof is something that we're looking for in a personal statement. In other words, you need to show us what you've done, not just tell us stuff. So it's very easy to say, I'm fascinated by medicine, I'm really interested in engineering or whatever. But you need some proof. You need to be able to concretely provide evidence for your interest. Okay, so let's go through four examples. And again, you determine which are the best, which are the not so good. So starting off with law, I'm interested in criminal law and visited my local Crown Court. I then read the 2023 case of R versus L. Judges ruled that the ap appellant was dangerous. It made me think about what dangerous means in law. Okay, next for Arabic. I have no, I have no qualifications in Arabic, although it's my second language and spoken at home. I also take regular Quranic lessons. Okay, and then for geography. My geography teacher suggested I read around the subject and lent me a book on geopolitics. I found it really interesting. Then a friend lent me a book on glaciology. An expert then came to my school and spoke about seismic activity in Indonesia. Okay, and then finally, I'm studying adaptation and plant genetics at school. My teacher gave a special lecture on the tip of Wichit, which is the Venus flytrap, uh, which I loved. In chemistry A-level, we looked at chirality for a lesson and I wanted to find out more. Okay, so pause the video if you like, have a think what works well, what works less well here. So starting off with the law one, I mean, in terms of the evidence we're looking for in a personal statement, it's evidence that you're ready to be an undergraduate student. You're ready to do the sorts of work, the sort of activities that undergraduates do. And there's a lot of information about that sort of work. Indeed, there are reading suggestions from Oxford University and many other universities about the sorts of books you could look at if you want to experience what it would be like to be a student of that subject. And this person for law clearly gets it. They're doing exactly the sorts of things that law students would do. And they've gone, for example, to their local Crown Court. So rather than just saying, I'm interested in criminal law, they've acted on that interest. So they've gone to the local Crown Court, which is free and easy to do if you live in the UK near a middle-sized town. Okay. Uh, and they've also read case law, which of course law students will have to do day in, day out. So that makes them very credible. So all in all, it's looking good. And even further than that, they are expressing their thoughts, their self-reflecting, which we'll go into a bit more detail later. But I think on balance, the law one is the best of the four here. The Arabic one is absolutely fine. I mean, it's no problem not having qualifications in Arabic if you want to apply to study it at Oxford. And it's obviously no problem that it's language spoken at home or that you have Quranic lessons. The slight issue here is, have you provided proof that you're ready to be an undergraduate student of Arabic, given that Arabic entails not just language study, but also culture and history and all sorts of other things. So we would need a bit of that evidence as well, okay? So there's nothing wrong with this section for Arabic, but I'd want a bit more to think that this person was credible. The geography one is fine, but it's all a bit passive. So this is someone who's been told, oh, my geography teacher did this, and then my friend did that, and then an expert did the other. That's okay, but we, it can be quite reassuring if we can see someone taking a bit of an initiative themselves, that they are looking into things because they care about them, because they are passionate, not just because someone else has told them you ought to be passionate about this. Remember, it's a personal statement, okay? And finally, for biology, I mean, this is someone who does demonstrate their own interests, does, to a certain extent, talk about what they've done about it, but it's all a bit curricular. It's all about stuff that they have done in their biology and chemistry A-levels or stuff that's happened in school. There's not much evidence here of someone going above and beyond. And so again, that would be slightly troubling. Okay, next up, standing out. So how do you differentiate yourself from a very good crowd of applications? Well, you decide. Let's have a look at the following four examples. So I've devoured Homer's Iliad and Odyssey. I loved the Aeneid in particular. 
My passions are many and varied, the classics. For history, having read Black as a Church by Joseph Sorrett, I am now convinced of the polyvocal nature of religion in America and how African-American voices can be best read and understood. For music, I read the book Musical Imaginations to think more deeply about improvisation and creativity. Creating an emotional response, I think, depends on familiarity, so novel expression has to come in familiar frameworks. Okay, And then for computer science, I entered the British Informatics Olympiad in 2022. There was a question asking for a decryption program. I struggled with this in the exam, in particular in making my code efficient. I've thought more about achieving efficiency and accuracy with reusable components. Okay, so what do you think works well? What do you think works less well there? So just going through it, classics one is fine. Good books selected, showing lots of going above and beyond school curriculum, which is all fine but there's not much detail. So what we're looking for in people that will stand out from the crowd is some self-reflection. And this is where you really make your personal statement personal. This is where the personality shines. What we're not getting is any of that. So in particular, this person says, I love the Aeneid, and then just moves on. Well, what did you love about the Aeneid? Why did you love the Aeneid? Right, give us some more detail than that would be important. For history, that's great. I mean, the book choice here is terrific. What Black is a Church is a book published by Oxford University Press. So this is someone who has gone out of their way to find a source on something that they find interesting. It's actually very easy to find these sources if you go to a, the website of a university press like Oxford University Press. So terrific book choice. I suppose the slight problem is that they are, they are just allowing the author to tell them what to think. So the author uh, Sorrett uh, talks about the polyvocal nature of religion in America. So this personal statement is just copying what the author thinks. And that's fine to a point, but we would like to see you add something, right? Give, give us your own perspective. It's fine to agree and, and, and like what you've read, but give us your reflections, okay? Otherwise, it's not a personal statement, okay? So music and computer science do this much better, and it's quite hard to tell these apart. They're both pretty strong. In music, they found another great book, uh, again from a university press, which is ideal. That's the sort of thing undergraduate students would read. And they have crucially said, I think, blah de blah, and they've given us some self-reflection. Similarly, in computer science, there is about, I have thought more about uh, achieving efficiency. So again, this person is thinking for themselves. They're providing some of that self-reflection, which we find so important. I would say the music one on balance is a bit difficult to understand. It's a slightly sort of complicated. It takes a few reads to, to get it. The computer science one is a little bit more straightforward. So you know, remember your personal statement will be read quite fast and so making your language plain and easy to grab, grab an audience is important. So maybe give it to some friends and family who aren't studying your subject to see if they just get what you're trying to say. Related to that, who are the audiences and how do you manage multiple audiences? Because your personal statement will be shared with up to five universities, potentially, not just Oxford, if you're thinking of applying to Oxford. So how do you manage that? Well, let's see what you think of the following four examples. So these are all degrees that Oxford offers that many other universities do not. So philosophy, politics and, and economics is the first example. PPE is the subject for me. It offers the perfect mix of subjects that outline how our world works. I'm so excited to start on my PPE adventure. Next for economics and management. My primary interest is in macroeconomics and government policies. Microeconomics is much less interesting to me. Then from philosophy and theology. I'm interested in theology. Other aspects of philosophy, such as ethics and knowledge, all depend on God. So he is what I want to study. Okay, and then finally for mathematics and philosophy, I'm particularly interested in the concept of infinity and have watched lectures on the Banach-Tarski paradox. I think the axiom of choice works well and I believe I have a unique solution. Okay, so have a think about what works, what works less well. So I'll tell you my views. So in terms of the PPE one at the start, that would be very troubling. I mean, it would be fine for someone who is applying to study PPE, but many universities don't offer that. And so if you write, I want to study PPE and nothing else. If you're applying to say economics at other universities, they will not likely take your application any further forward. So you're putting yourself at enormous risk. We don't need you in the personal statement to say, I want to study PPE to be credible. So please be very careful. Remember that you are catering to multiple audiences. And so finding the common denominator amongst all of the subjects you're applying to 
is important. For economics and management, it's almost the opposite problem. It seems like this person is applying to economics everywhere except for Oxford, where they're applying to economics and management. And by saying that they're not interested in microeconomics, that's a bit disturbing because management studies entails a lot of microeconomics. I mean, more generally, saying that you are not interested in stuff would be alarming to most universities, so it's probably best not to mention it. <laughs> okay. uh, for philosophy and theology, I mean, this is fine, you know, saying that you have faith and that that has affected, that affects your, your way of seeing the world. It's not a problem, it can't be held against you. I suppose what would be slightly disturbing is that this is someone who wants to study theology, maybe not philosophy and theology. Also, this might be someone with a bit of a closed mind on certain questions, and that can be can mean that they perhaps don't enjoy the course, where a bit more of an open mind can be very helpful. So I think the maths and philosophy one is the most successful, because this seems to be someone who is applying for maths everywhere, except for Oxford, uh, where they're applying for maths and philosophy. And in the personal statement, rather than saying, I'm applying for maths and philosophy, they're talking about uh, infinity, which is of interest and relevance to maths and philosophy. So all of the universities to which they're applying for maths will be happy, and Oxford, where they're applying for maths and philosophy, will also be happy. So what they've done is they found the common thread, they found something that all of the audiences will be happy with. Okay, so try and think about that if you're applying to different degrees at different universities. So what about extracurriculars? So those are things that are not academic that you might talk about in your personal statement. We'll have a look through these four and see what you think works best. In my free time, I work in a nearby cafe. Actually, this job has taught me a lot about economics. Our overhead costs are often changing as we have to deal with coffee and other supply chains from all over the world. I'm a prefect. I'm in the development squad for Arsenal. I write a weekly column for The Observer and I'm an Oscar-nominated special effects artist and I recently saved a man's life with CPR. <laughs> uh, as I have caring responsibilities for a parent and siblings, I haven't had time for anything other than that and my own schoolwork. And finally, I devote all spare time to my academic interests. Okay, so which do you think is the best? Which do you think is less good? Okay, so extracurricular activities, being those things that are not academic, will not affect your chances of getting into Oxford University. We don't put any weight on it. So honestly, the fourth one would be fine. I devote all my spare time to academic interests would be fine for Oxford. <laughs> okay. um, but other universities do like to see some extracurricular activities to get a sense that you are able to manage your time or you uh, are able to work in teams very well. So you shouldn't include nothing if you're applying to multiple universities. It's a bit risky. The rule of thumb is 80-20, so where 80% of your personal statement is academic or supercurricular. 20% is non-academic extracurricular. So other approaches, the first one with regards to saying they have a, a job in a nearby cafe, uh, they've actually made this kind of academically relevant by saying that they, it, they learnt a lot from their job about the economy and about economics. You can do that, you know, if this person's applying for economics, that can make sense, you know, linking things together. It's definitely not required, uh, but it can be quite a neat trick if you have some way of linking your non-academic with your academic interests. So that can work quite, quite well. Not required though. Um, the second one is just like wildly impressive. Now this is obviously unrealistically impressive. We don't see anything quite as impressive as all of this, but we do see some very impressive lists of things to do. And the reason for me including this is just to reassure you that we would put no weight on this whatsoever at Oxford. We just honestly would not care if someone had this incredible list of achievements. Some universities may well care, but we don't, we cannot. <laughs> so if you are not as impressive as this, and I don't think any human being is as impressive as this, then don't worry about it. Okay, and please don't consider not applying to Oxford because you're not, you know, prefect or head of the school or whatever. Okay, uh, the third one with regards to caring responsibilities, I mean, the personal statement can actually be a good forum for raising what we would call contextual matters such as that you have caring responsibilities. So it can be a good opportunity to say what maybe has interfered with your academic work or what might have got in the way of you doing other things. And it's perfectly legitimate and fine to do it and it can be quite useful. Certainly not required, but can be useful. Okay, so finally, how to finish. Well, I mean, you need to be careful with obtaining feedback. It's obviously essential to ask teachers and friends and family to have a look at your personal statement. But what we sometimes see are personal statements that are edited to within an inch of their lives and they are very difficult to read. You know, little bits have been added on and there's no flow, there's no structure to it, there's no linking. 
the points. And also, it seems obvious that someone has lost their voice a bit, that they've been told by other people, you should say this, you should say that, you should, you should say the other. But remember, it's a personal statement, you've got to keep it personal. So be careful with that. It may be worth you know, going through multiple drafts, but then redrafting all in one go so that it gels together quite nicely. So, so related to that, I wouldn't advise using chat GPT. But stuff like Grammarly or other sort of software that checks your grammar, uh, punctuation and spelling is a good idea. You know, we're looking for British English and it needs to be accurate. It can give a very bad impression if you include a spelling mistake or an obvious grammatical error. So you do need to check for that sort of stuff. In terms of, sort of literally how to sign off your personal statement, bookending can work quite well. That's where you recall a particular point you made earlier in the personal statement, ideally at the beginning. So you start and finish the personal statement on the same theme. So if you remember that opening line I had for medicine about what is pain and that being the start of this, that person's journey into medical sciences, you could sign off with the same idea. I started by wanting to understand what pain is and I have only just started my journey into medical sciences. I'm excited for the next step. Would work really well. Not required, but it sort of wraps everything up in quite a nice bow. Right, so hopefully you've, you've understood a little bit what it's like to be an admissions tutor. You get what it's like to read many of these and what we're looking for. The key things, as mentioned, are that we want you to be yourself. We want you to have personal statements. If you don't have stuff that you think you can talk about, if you don't have proof that you're ready to be an undergraduate student, you need to start pursuing some super curricular activities. They needn't take long. And to focus your activities, go and check out my videos on super curriculars because they should help. But you may well have further questions. In fact, I'm sure you do because it's a complicated old business. So for goodness sake, do please put them in the comments below. I will get around to answering them as soon as I can. We want to help you. And so if I can help you, I certainly will. But thank you for sticking it out this long. You are the, the ones with the best stamina <laughs> who've made it to the end. Uh, thank you. Uh, and I look forward to hopefully meeting you one day. Thanks for watching. All the best. Bye now.